Hi friends, it's Nicole from the Bronx Children's Museum. I hope you're all having a great day and that you're excited to learn some fun new things. Today, we're gonna to be learning all about how different animals are adapted to camouflage in their environments. First, we'll read a book about camouflage. Then we'll look at some cool Bronx animals who are great at camouflaging in their environment. And then we're gonna do an art activity. Let's get started. So what exactly does camouflage mean? To camouflage is to use your body to blend in with your surroundings or your environment. For example, if I wanted to camouflage with this gray wall, I could wear a gray shirt or I could paint my hair or face gray to blend in with the wall. And since today I'm wearing purple, I could also go and stand next to a purple wall and that would help me camouflage too. Camouflage is an adaptation that animals have. An adaptation is a special feature or behavior of an animal that helps them to survive in a specific environment. In other words, if an animal can camouflage, that will help it to survive. Because it's able to hide in its surroundings, it makes it a lot harder for predators to find it. Let's take a look at some different animals from around the world who are great at camouflaging. We're gonna read a book, Look Again, by Steve Jenkins. And as we're reading, see if you can spot the camouflage critters. Look Again, Secrets of Animal Camouflage by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. Read with permission from HMH Publishing. Staying alive can be a challenge for an animal in the wild. Many creatures face the constant threat of being eaten by bigger and stronger animals. And even the fiercest hunters must find prey or they will starve. Staying hidden, whether from predators or prey, is one way to stay alive. And many animals do this surprisingly well. Colorful coral reefs and dense forests of kelp, a kind of seaweed, are found in shallow ocean waters in many parts of the world. These habitats provide food and shelter to more different kinds of animals than almost any place on Earth. Many coral reef and kelp forest animals are masters of disguise, blending in with the colors and textures of their surroundings. Some do this to avoid being eaten. Others do it to fool their prey. roots, leaves, and branches. Each part of a tree is a different habitat. Tree bark and the moss and algae that grow on it provides a home or resting place for a variety of animals. Even living high above the ground can be risky. Snakes, birds, and other predators are a constant threat. The best defense? Look like part of the tree. Flowers produce nectar and pollen, foods that attract insects, birds, and bats. For some creatures, these blossoms are also a colorful place to hide. Some animals sip flower nectar. Others prey on creatures that are attracted to blossoming plants. And a few fool their enemies by concealing themselves among the petals. The leaves and plant debris that cover the forest floor offer the animals that live there lots of ways to conceal themselves. Many of these creatures are a dull color to blend in with the dirt and leaf litter of the forest floor. A few go a step further, imitating dead leaves with impressive accuracy. The harsh landscape of the Arctic is covered by snow and ice for much of the year. It's a challenging place for an animal that needs to stay out of sight. For these creatures, staying hidden means being mostly white, at least when the ground is covered with snow. Leaves and vines can provide food, shelter, and, for some creatures, a handy hiding place. Looking like part of a plant can be a good survival strategy for both predators and prey. 
Some of these creatures have almost perfect disguises. Survival can be a challenge in a rocky environment where there is little vegetation to hide in. These creatures have adapted to life in the open by imitating the color and texture of their harsh habitat. Now what do you see? Better look again. Do you have a favorite camouflaged animal? And have you ever seen a camouflaged animal here in the Bronx? We actually have lots of animals here in the Bronx that are really great at camouflaging. Let's take a look at a few of them. The first Bronx animal I want to talk about is the white-tailed deer. You may have seen deer in your neighborhood park. Deer are great at camouflaging in their environments, which is typically a wooded forest area. Their light brown fur helps them camouflage among the trees of Van Cortlandt Park or Pelham Bay Park. And baby deer even have little white spots on them, which makes it hard to spot them if they're sitting in a pool of sunlight in the leaves. The next animal I wanna mention is a master of disguise, but you may not even know that they live here in the Bronx. I'm talking about a praying mantis. Most praying mantises are green so that they can blend in with their environment of leaves and plants. But there are praying mantises that are even pink or blue or brown, depending on what type of environment they live in. They really are great at camouflage. The last animal that I want to talk about is the hognose snake. We actually have hognose snakes here in New York and we have one in the museum's collection. To tell us a little bit more about hognose snakes and how they camouflage, we have a special guest. This is Eleanor, the animal expert, and Tremont, the hognose snake. So Eleanor, can you tell us a little bit about how Tremont can camouflage? Yes, Tremont or hognose snake is light brown with, dark, with darker brown spots. Did you notice that? Mm. And so this, these colors help him camouflage on, on the tree bark or in the sandy dirt on the forest floor. Mm. Now, hognose snakes mostly live in forests and camouflaging helps them protect themselves from predators such as birds, skunks, or large turtles such as snapping turtles. Mm. And uh, camouflaging can also help them catch their own prey. And so when they so they can hide under the forest floor and all the animals don't see them. So if a toad comes hopping along, uh, the hognose snake, since the toad can't see him, could, could leap out and eat the toad. Wow, so camouflage can not only help protect an animal from predators, but it can also help it to catch its own prey. That's pretty cool, right? Well, thank you, Eleanor and Tremont, for coming. We really appreciate it, and we loved learning all about hognose snakes. Of course. Bye. Now that we've learned all about the different animals that live here in the Bronx, we're going to do an art activity. We're going to make our own camouflaged critters. To do this activity, you're going to need two sheets of black paper, oil pastels, scissors, and tape or glue. You can do the activity along with me or you can wait until the video's over and then try it at home or in your classroom. Let's get started. Before you begin, make sure that you have all of your materials. First, decide on which animal you want to create. I'm going to draw Tremont the hognose snake. It can be helpful to have a reference image of your animal so that you can refer back to it as you work on your project. I'm going to look at this picture of Tremont while I draw. On one piece of paper, draw an outline of your animal using a white oil pastel. Focus on creating a large silhouette or outline of the animal. There's no need to get super detailed, but feel free to add some additional details based on your animal. For example, if you're drawing a deer, maybe you want to add some white spots. If you're drawing a bird, add some feathers. Tremont has lots of irregular shaped scales on his body that are different shades of brown and yellow. So I'm going to outline those scales in white 
and then color them in using brown and yellow. Once you've finished coloring in your animal, use scissors to cut out the outline. Now, think about your animal's habitat. Where does it live? What colors would you see there? Again, it can be helpful to look at a reference image of your animal in its habitat. If your animal is good at camouflage, these colors should be the same as what you used to color in your animal earlier. Use a white oil pastel to draw an outline of your animal's habitat. Again, you can just use loose shapes. Cognose snakes live on forest floors, so I'm drawing the sandy soil and then some shapes to represent branches, shrubs, and rocks. Now I'll color in those shapes using the same colors I used for my animal. What habitat are you creating? Maybe you have an ocean habitat with lots of greens and blues. Or maybe you have a desert animal, so you want reds and oranges. Now you can attach your animal to your habitat background using tape or glue. Turn your animal this way and that to find the best angle for camouflaging. Once your animal is well hidden, challenge a friend or family member to find them. Take your time creating your own camouflage critter and be sure to send us a picture. We can't wait to see them. Well, we hope you loved learning all about camouflage critters and that the next time you're walking around your neighborhood in the Bronx, you look a little more closely to see if you can spot one in your own neighborhood. Thank you for joining me, Eleanor, and Tremont the Snake today. See you next time.